Hi there, Mark Geisler here. I decided to put this short video together and send it out to my list uh, because I've been getting a, a few questions about the, the new Facebook uh, timeline. And the question, oddly enough, that I've been getting the most is what are the what size should the header image be? Now, if you've if you've been following Facebook at all, you know that now you can have this big image across the whole top of the, the page. And so the question of the sizing for the Facebook timeline header image is what people are asking. And uh, this is something that's really easy to do. You can do this, uh, get your image ready for, uh, for that using free tools that are already on your computer. And uh, so that's what this is all about. The uh, Requirements are an image 835 pixels wide by 315 pixels high. And if you go wider than the uh, that image, you're going to end up getting something cut off that you probably won't want cut off. Um, you can go higher than the 315 because when you upload the image, you have an option of, of uh, scrolling up and down on the image to pick the 315 pixel wide uh, band that you want but for this video we're going to end up we're going to create the image to be 835 by 315 and what we're going to do is use an image that we have a, or a program we have on the computer called paint I'm working on a PC paint comes with the uh, the computer so um, The uh, image that you upload is, you can use any image that you want. You can upload one off your computer or you can download one off the, uh, the, the web if you want. I would caution you to be careful about images that you download off the web because if you don't make sure that you have the rights to use them or if you don't properly attribute ones that allow you to use them with attribution, you can get in problems with the well, for lack of a better word, the picture police. Uh, the um, biggest one in that area is uh, is Getty Images. They have uh, automated bots that are scouring the web all the time looking for their pictures or pictures that they believe are theirs. And if they find one on your your web page, uh, that uh, they'll send you a very nasty letter telling you to cease and desist. And they may also include a, a very hefty bill that could be in the thousands of dollars. And they have a, a legal department that is very uh, vigorous in pursuing people um, you would think that for one image that uh, it wouldn't be worth their while, but uh, their position seems to be that uh, they will go after any and every uh, person that uh, violates their uh, their uh, copyright uh, or, their, or uses their images illegally. So be careful if you use something off there. Make sure you read all the fine details, the terms of service and everything, because quite often a lot of the... Uh, so-called free image sites that you go to are not so free and they the site will not be held liable if you use an image that is not you don't have the rights to even though they may say you have the rights to ultimately it could be uh, Getty Images who supplied the the uh, photo to begin with and you could still be in in, the, in, in in trouble so ultimately the safest thing to do is to use your own images or those of a friend or you can go to a photographer and buy that you know and buy the image outright so that you have full rights to the image. So uh, enough of that soapbox. We go into paint. We were going to open an image that we have. And uh, I've got this image that I've called Frosty Leaves on my computer. I'll open that up. And here we have uh, Frosty Leaves. And uh, this is an image that I took of some uh, frosty leaves on a frosty morning in my backyard one, one day. And you can see paint is nice because it, it gives you the pixels uh, uh, gradients along the uh, left and the top. Uh, you can see that this uh, image is 11, 10, 20, 30, 40, about 1150 pixels wide by... 6, 10, 20, 30, 40, by about, by about 650 high. So it's obviously too big. So I'm not going to get into, uh, well, actually, I'll just do a quick thing here. You can, there's a couple things you could do. You could, uh, you can, I, 
if you like want this full width of the image to show on your page, that's fine. But you can also go in and uh, uh, select. You know, the, I'm not a very good drawer. Say you like this area here a little bit better. You could select that and crop it down to that image and uh, get that in there. But uh, we're not going to do that for this uh, demonstration. So what we're going to do now first is we'll uh, resize it down to the proper width. We can do that very easily with this restore uh, resize button. And you can see you have options of percentage or pixels. And you can see 1152 by 648 is what it is right now. So we're going to change the, the width to 835. And you'll notice that the, the vertical, uh, the height changed automatically. And that's because we have this maintain aspect ratio uh, box checked off. We don't have to worry about the skew here, so we'll ignore that. Click OK. And you can see now that we're at right at 835 pixels. We're uh, still at 410, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, about 470 or 480 pixels high. So we're too high. And uh, we're going to now select part of this image that we want to uh, create our final image with. We'll go to Select, Rectangular Selection. And just for ease of uh, calculating this out for the sake of this tutorial, uh, I'm going to put the cursor right on the 100. I'm going to go down 100. Well, let's. I'll click on it and I'll go down 100, 200, 300, 10, and there's 15. So now I'll take my cursor way over to the right-hand edge, making sure that I'm still in the 350. Well, let's make it 320 just for argument's sake. It's okay to be a little bit over. We let go of the mouse. We click crop. And voila, we have an image that is 835 pixels by 315 pixels, the perfect size. So now we're going to save that, save as, and you got options uh, for saving as PNG, JPEG, BMP, GIF, and other formats. Stick, stick with a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, so we'll pick the JPEG. It comes up here. I'm going to change the name a little bit here. Uh, my computer seems to be lagging a little bit this morning. Frosty Lee's uh, FB header. Click Save. And there we go. I'll close Paint. Now I'll just go into my Windows Explorer. I've got it in this temp folder. There it is, FB header. Click OK. And there's our header image. Ready to go, ready to be uploaded into Facebook. It's as simple as that. Okay, thanks very much. My name is Mark Geisler. I hope this little tip helps you. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.